This will be a demonstration of the basic exam of the head and neck. When a patient first walks in and sits in the exam chair, you want to take a look at them, look at their face and their neck, looking for any asymmetry when they speak, uh, looking for any masses in their neck as they breathe and swallow, any lesions that are obvious uh, on your first initial uh, exam. And I usually start by examining the ears and using the otoscope. First, pull out on the pinna of the ear like this. Insert the otoscope gently. And you can visualize the tympanic membrane and the external ear canal very well. Often there will be cerumen, which has to be cleaned out before you can adequately see the uh, tympanic membrane. And you will do the same thing for both ears. The otoscope is also useful for examining the inside of the nose because it offers you a magnified view. Uh, the nose should be examined carefully. First, the outside of the nose to see any evidence of trauma. Um, the nose is the most frequently fractured bone in the body, and, and most people have some history of trauma. The trauma can alter not only the appearance of the nose, but the inside skeleton. And if you look inside the nose, steady your hand and take a look at the septum, which is in the midline of the nose and look at the turbinates. The first turbinate you'll see is the inferior turbinate. If you look up a little higher, you'll see the middle turbinate. The turbinates swell in response to uh, any environmental irritants, or we call them allergens, such as dust mites or pollen, smog, uh, animal dander, and you can see evidence of allergic rhinitis when you look in the nose and see swelling and redness. Uh, if a person has had a fracture of the nose, you will see a deviation of their septum, which can obstruct their breathing through that side of the nose. And this will cause a nasal airway obstruction and difficulty with breathing through their nose, resulting in uh, often mouth breathing or snoring at night. After you examine the nose, the next system would be the oral cavity and oral pharynx. And you can use the same otoscope and take off the uh, ear attachment and use this as a light source. And then you want to take a tongue blade and tell the patient to open her mouth. Open, please. And first, just take a look around at the uh, oral cavity, the palate, the hard and soft palate. And she has a uh, torus palatinus, which is a normal variant, a little bony overgrowth in the hard palate. Uh, you also want to take a look at the sides of the mouth, of the buccal mucosa, looking at the color of the mucosa, looking for any abnormal white spots or raised irregular areas. Then I usually have you uh, bite down and take a look at the occlusion of the teeth. Open again. And then go ahead and say, ah. Oh. And press down a little bit on the tongue. You can see the soft palate elevate. It should be symmetric. You can see the uvula. And in younger patients or children, you often see large tonsils. In most adults, the tonsils have atrophied uh, to the point where they're just barely visible and pretty flat. Uh, you also want to examine the floor of the mouth. This is where the ducts from the submandibular salivary gland uh, will empty. And the floor of the mouth is usually soft. Uh, it's, a, it's an area that can develop cancerous lesions uh, or other abnormalities from irritation or irritating substances. Go ahead and stick your tongue out, move it side to side, and then you can check for uh, function of the hypoglossal nerve. Okay, that's good. Go ahead and close. The sinuses should be examined. The major sinuses are the frontal sinuses located behind the forehead, the ethmoid sinuses, which are behind the bridge of the nose, just uh, beside the orbits, and then the maxillary sinuses, which are behind the cheek. And so those should be um, palpated if the patient has any complaints of uh, sinus infections or sinus tenderness. Uh, the maxillary sinuses can be palpated here for any tenderness. Um, and also here for the ethmoid sinuses and here for the frontal sinuses. The sphenoid sinus is located deep uh, behind the eye and patients with sphenoid disease will often complain of a very deep-seated eye pain. Next, we're going to do a palpation of the neck. We start with the cheek area. This is where the parotid salivary glands are located, and those should be palpated for symmetry and for detection of any masses. Most uh, masses within the salivary, the parotid salivary gland are benign. Go ahead and open your mouth. And this is where the temporomandibular joint is. 
It's a common area for dysfunction and pain, and you can often, in patients with TMJ syndrome, there will be a click here and some pain with opening. Go ahead and close. And then move down and palpate the submandibular area. The submandibular salivary glands are right underneath the mandible. They should be soft and symmetric. Um, if there's any enlargement or nodularity, that's abnormal. It's a sign of either chronic inflammation or uh, possibly a tumorous growth. And go ahead and move your way back toward the posterior triangle of the neck. This is where the sternocleidomastoid muscle inserts. And there are many lymph nodes that are uh, potentially in enlarged in the neck. Um, move your way down the SCM muscle, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And this is where you feel the jugular chain of nodes if they are enlarged. This is where the carotid sheath is underneath. And move down to the uh, supraclavicular area, to the clavicles. And then you can also pop up the midline of the neck. This is where the trachea and larynx are located. In males, there will be a prominent thyroid cartilage called the, the Adam's apple. In women, it's not prominent. You can feel the cricoid cartilage here. And the thyroid gland is over the trachea, usually below the cricoid cartilage. Go ahead and swallow. And when, it, when a patient swallows, you can feel the thyroid gland moving up, and that's normal. It should move normally. The thyroid gland should be palpated for any nodules or irregularity or enlargement. And continue palpation of the neck all the way back to the trapezius, the muscle on uh, the posterior part of the neck, to feel for any masses. That completes the basic examination of the head and neck.